Shalom family. Welcome to church. <clears throat> Can we be upstanding as we take Psalm 113? I'm reading in the message translation. It said, Hallelujah. You who serve God, praise God. Just to speak his name is praise. Just to remember God is a blessing. Now and tomorrow and always from east to west, from dawn to dusk, keep lifting up all your praises to God. God is higher than anything and anyone, at shining everything you can think, you can see in the sky. Who can compare with God our God, so majestically enthroned, surveying his, majest his magnificent in the heavens and in the earth. Even as we begin service this morning, just lift up your hands and just welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit. Father, we just welcome you in our services this morning. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your presence. We give you praise and thanks. Just bless the name of the Lord for his faithful and his good. His mercies endure forever. Lift your voices and give him praise. Come into his presence with thanksgiving and into his heart with praise. Our God, we call you God. We call you Father. We hallow your name. We bow down in a, in a humble adoration. And we bless you, matchless God, everlasting Father, unchangeable God, the solid rock on which we stand, the one who sees us through the first day down to the seventh day of the week. Lord, we come before you, joining the whole of creation, and we lift up the name of Yahweh, we lift up the name of our Father, we lift up the name of Jesus, higher than every mountain, high above the known and the unknown. Just lift your voices and bless the name of the Lord, for he is faithful, he is God, he's sovereign, he's our father, he's our provider, he's our healer, he's our protector, he's our shield, he's a stronghold, the solid rock on which we stand. Lord, we give you all the glory, Lord, we give you all the praise, we hallow your name and magnify you. Glory and honor be unto your holy name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Just bless his name, saints of God, this morning. Thank you for your presence, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light.
says he inhabits the praises of his people so use your imagination and say father god i welcome you if you want to pray the spirit go ahead as he leads you we know that he's here we have come before the king of the universe the mighty good god lift your voices and recognize him we know you are here in holy fire we know you are here precious holy spirit we know you are here you are here to take us higher we know you are here precious holy korabado kosita labada we pray in our understanding and we pray in the language of the Spirit. For the next 30 seconds, can you lift your prayer language? Let our worship, our spirit rise to the level of worship. Come on, just go ahead. He is here. Just go ahead and pray. Let's celebrate the presence of the King. He is here, the Holy One. <laughs> so let him be adored. He is here, so worship him. Such a sweet reward. He is here, he now missed. He is here. You are good, you are kind, I have never seen your kind, I'm devoted to your praise, and forever to your name, you are good God, and you are kind. I have never seen your kind. I'm devoted to your praise and forever. Can you sing it to the Lord? Just your own voices. You are good. You are kind. I have never. I have never. That's why I need and forever to everybody you
cake. I just want to put some beautiful icing around the cake. Just lift your hands to the Lord and sing this with me. I have no other God but you. I have no other God but you. This is why I praise the way I do. Because you have done 
what no man has done and you will do and you will do what no man can with your hands lifted up i have no i have no Jehovah. <laughs> oh, Lamentations 3 verse 22, still in the message translation. He said, God's loyal love couldn't have run out. His merciful love couldn't have dried up. They are created new every morning. How great is your faithfulness? He went down and said, I'm sticking with God. I say it over and over again because he is all I've got. Is God all you've got this morning? Can you just raise your voice in worship? Can you just raise your voice in worship? That is why he is called Jehovah. What he say he will do, that is what he does. He is not a God who whoever fails. He is our father. He is our master. He is our creator. God is the God of the awesome wonders. No one can be compared to him. No greater blessing than the blessing of God that makes rich and has no sorrow. We serve a living God. Saints of God, just go ahead and bless him. Faith Foundation, the God you serve is a God who never forgets his own, who never abandons his words, whose words never return to him void. Can you go ahead and reaffirm him this morning? Hey, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness towards us each morning, each hour, each second. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we are grateful. Scripture says we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. In Him we move. In Him we live. In Him we have our being. Lord, we thank you. Because of your great love, we are not consumed. Because of your faithfulness, we are still standing. Lord, we exalt your holy name. of the Lord never ceases His mercy is never 
20, verse 22. I'm taking it in the NIV translation. Okay, we'll start from 21. He said, again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And verse 22, he said, and with this, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. This morning, there's a sweet anointing in this sanctuary. There's a sweet anointing in this sanctuary. Can you just do a prophetic heart and just stretch your hands as if you want to receive something? Just stretch your hand and say, I receive the Holy Spirit. I receive the Holy Spirit. He said, and he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Can you receive the Holy Spirit this morning? Whoa, we receive the Holy Spirit. But as many that have received him, today we gave the right to become the children of God. Hey, we receive the Holy Spirit this morning. We receive the Holy Spirit this morning. Lord, we thank you for your abiding presence within us. We thank you for your abiding presence within us. Help us to sense the spirit presence and power. Give us the courage to live up to the spirit-powered mission of sharing Jesus' grace. We receive the Holy Spirit. Father, we just bless your holy name. Touch me with your hands, Jesus. Touch me with your hands, Savior. Touch me with your hands, Jesus. Touch me with your hands. The same, the same way came. Touch me, Lord. Touch me with your hands. Sweet spirit of a living God. Please don't let me go. The same way I came. One of my favorite scriptures. It said, Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself, it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Verse 5 says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. We're just going to lift up our voices this morning and just say, Lord, teach me to abide in you. Teach me to abide in you. He said, abide in me as I abide in you. Without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. Lord, this morning we are asking that you teach us to abide in you. Help us to be deeply rooted in Christ. Help us to be deeply rooted in Christ. That when the storms of life comes, we will not be blown off. Hey, that when the pressures and the circumstances and the things that doesn't seem like come to us, we will not be shaken. Lord, teach us to abide in you. As a nation, Lord, teach us to abide in you. More than ever before, Lord, we are asking that you will teach us to abide in you. Let us become a person of the Holy Spirit. Let us become one with you. This is our prayer and our heart desire this morning. Father, we just thank you. In your presence, that's where I want to be. In your presence, Lord, that's where I want to be. Say, in your presence, I will flourish and I will blossom like a rose flower. Your presence I will flourish and I will blossom like a rock 
announcements but I just sense that there's someone here you came with so much pain and heartache you are so troubled in your spirit right now there's, you are troubled and your heart is heavy if I, I, I uh, just going to break protocol but please if you are the one I'd just like you to please come out all eyes closed no shame no judgment would like to pray for you because the presence of the Lord is so strong here. In your presence, I will flourish. And I will blossom like a rose roar. In your presence, in your presence that's where I want to be. You know, I sense God saying, my peace I give to you. It's not a peace that the world understands. But he's pouring so much peace in your heart. And God is going to give you answers. That you will know that only him gave you that answer. He's just pouring it on you. In, in, in all time. 24 hours, 1 hour, 2 days. But God is going to give you direct answers. Direct answers. That's what I sense. That's what I hear. Direct answers. Please, I'd like the pastors to please pray for them. Pray specifically pray for them. Pray intentionally. And I just don't, I, I don't want you to just, I don't want you to just pray. I want you to hear what God is saying. Because God is going to speak to you concerning the people that you are praying for. And I want you to give them that direct message. In your presence, in your presence, I will flourish. And I will blossom like a rose roar. color yellow I see the color yellow and I don't know if it uh, if that if yellow resonates with you God is saying to you this morning that I'm shining on you like the morning sun you will feel a breath of fresh air I just think that God is pouring on you God is pouring so much love on us this morning his love is just pouring on us. And, and uh, is there anyone who has a prophetic word in the house this morning? For someone. God is giving two, three people prophetic words this morning. Two, three people. All eyes closed. This service is not going the way it usually is supposed to go. But I know that God is giving two, three people a specific message for others in the house this morning. If you're the one, please, just let me see your hand. Just wave your hands. Your presence. Okay? Please, uh, Pastor Joy, somebody is raising his hands at the back there. Can you just let us hear what the person is saying? Give the person a mic. You know, there's a strong prophetic utterance spirit in the house this morning, and I want us to just jump in the wave just just flow the way god is flowing this morning the lord is causing healing for someone with arthritis this morning there's somebody you have arthritis and it's been disturbing you and God says that he's healing you this morning there is healing in the house this morning can we hear that word please oh let him come share it please quickly 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 while we please place the announcement we have a testimony Mr. Uyi can you come here we have a testimony a wonderful testimony thank you Leon all right Shalom. Shalom. 
feeling the heaviness. I just felt that embrace of the Father. The person, or I sense that someone is feeling lost and confused. But I just felt that hug of the Father and just telling you to come home. That's what I heard. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other prophetic word? Okay, thank you. Shalom. Shalom. I heard a word for Pastor Messi. God said he loves you so much. That you shouldn't stop what you are doing. That it's going to take you so far. That there's going to be a time when you are ministering. That life will be transformed. That the dead will come back to life. That's what I heard. Hallelujah. We just declare the manifestations of those words. You know, when we do things like this, it's not like we are joking. Or we are guessing. Or we just want to get you all warmed up. But we know that God is speaking. And please, if you have a prophetic word for someone, I want you to write it down and then drop it with the pastors. We will ensure that it gets to you. Prophecy has a way of transforming lives. Prophecy has a way of healing, has a way of bringing exhortation, has a way of transforming. So if God is giving you a word, please do not hesitate to put it down and let the person hear it. It can be for the church. It can be for one person. But that word is important. Praise God. Shalom everyone. Welcome to today's message. We believe that God is going to do something great. I want you to listen to this testimony with your eyes. I days to say it. Heart wide open. Be eyes wide open. Okay. Shalom family. Good morning everybody. Good morning Papa. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, I don't know how to start here. His <laughs> hands are shaking. Okay, um, my name is Sawi. I want to appreciate God for what God has been doing in my life. Um, you know, you don't know how much God loves you until He displays His hands working in your life. I had several testimonies that God gave to me personally last year. I know I didn't share, but the one that happened of recent got me blown away. On Tuesday, I went to one of my sites at MTM Mass, and I had to instruct some of my workers, the iron benders, on how to do a particular um, steel reinforcement for me. So on Wednesday, I had several sites I had to visit. I could not go there. I was with a client on, around, along Sapley Road that on Wednesday when I got a call that one of my iron men who was not on site on Tuesday, the guy came on Wednesday to work, got electrocuted. Immediately, I was in the client's office. I dropped my phone. I started praying. I started praying. Then the thought of this guy is dead. The, this is the picture of the guy. Now, let me explain. He was trying to return the road. This um, three line that feeds transformer lights, that three wire, he mistakenly used the rod to touch one. And he was standing on another, he was standing on top of the beam rod. Immediately they say he touched the rod. He got burnt on the air and was thrown from, so if you know a two-story building, the decking of a second floor, he was thrown from that floor, two-story, and landed on the ground, on the road. They took this guy from that point took him to hospitals around MTMS. No hospital could accept the guy. Now, while I was with the client in the office, I started praying, and immediately I heard this guy is dead. In a flash, the testimony mama shared many years ago just ringed in my ear that when she could not give birth, that she started hearing that voice that she could not give birth, but she started confessing. Immediately I started confessing, nothing missing, nothing broken. I was just saying that word repeated, nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing missing, nothing broken. Around 2 to 3, that on Wednesday, the network service I was using got blocked. I could not make call. I could not receive call. Till the next day, I had no information concerning where they took this guy that was working for me. I started hearing, um, I went to the site. I started hearing, I should say, who get the site? Because I'm sorry to say, the guy is, uh -huh, if you understand what I mean by him. Uh -huh. You understand? So I started hearing. If you don't take and do money, different talk. And I started praying. All throughout that day in my mind, I said, God, please, this narrative should not come to pass. Because first, 
I will stop practicing as a civil engineer. I might be arrested. Not might, I will be arrested. That guy was walking on that floor with no safety kit. And there were so many things attached to it. I started praying. I said, God, help me. God, help me. The next morning on Thursday, I was going to, um, to visit one of his friends. I just entered the station at, um, at Iriri. One of my missing man just saw me. Ah, oga, 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 oga. We don't define you since we tried to call you yesterday. That last day, ah, network, MTM block, sorry. The network service I was using blocked my line. You understand? So, was that, ah, they took him finally to UBTH. That when they got there, it was just, I don't know, let me not exaggerate, but I just want to thank God. Like, Please, can we celebrate God? Ah, come on now. Come on. May we never lose his wonder. Can we lift up our voices and give glory to God? That can only be God. This can only be God. Let's give him praise. To wrap up the testimony, when I called, before I went to pay him a visit in the hospital, the day I called him, I just picked the call. It was like, oga, oga, oga. I was shocked. He was the one that was telling me, Oga, Mo, thank God, though. Ah, hey. I'm supposed to be the one telling you, Mo, thank God. He still said, ah, Oga, when God, when God saved my life, because funny enough, the guy is not Nigerian. He's a Togolese. And I had to meet with his, because they have a union around my axis. Mm -hmm. I had to meet with one of my friends who was also a Togolese. And he told me, he said, Ui, you thank God. He said, if not, we for come for you. He told me, he said, if not, we for come for you because funny enough, the person I gave the job to, I submitted that job to, was never around. The guy traveled. He didn't tell me. The people I told to do the beam for me, they didn't come that day. He switched everybody the next day. And I just I'm just thanking God for how God has helped me. Hallelujah. Nothing missing, nothing broken. You know, I had something for what he said. He said. He remembered the testimony mama gave many years ago. Please, let's stop pocketing testimony. Somebody needs it. Just like I said, a prophetic word, it will change somebody's life. It will transform somebody's life. Please, let's celebrate God again. Bless you. Nothing missing, nothing broken. And you will always receive the help of God. Somebody, God will give you help. That's the word that came out from the GSW, this God secret weapon, this week. God will give us help. God will help us. God has, God, God has given us backing in the name of Jesus. Please, can we rise on our feet? Just rise on your feet. Oh, sorry. The testimony has taken me away. I beg, sit down. Don't be angry. Sit down, sit down. Let's take the announcement. struggling with emotional pain or life has happened to you even though you're carrying a heavy weight of inner pain you are not broken you have just had wonderful experiences that has a capacity to turn others into a beautiful masterpiece let me invite you let's go on a journey on a soul care journey a journey of soul care and transformation is a mentorship boot camp for only 50 ladies who are navigating who have navigated emotional trauma but also want to help others turn pain into power regardless of age or background. What is this about? A safe place to mentor 50 ladies It's called Kabak Mentorship Conclave It's a community where vulnerability is celebrated and the past becomes a propeller jet to turn pain into power. Friends, today's pain is actually tomorrow's profitable venture. We're, we're going to guide your one-on-one -on -one guidance tailored to your unique needs. We have a qualified team who will guide you through the process, hold you by the hand as we navigate the memories and the emotions. Come and join us. You will find your voice again. It's on the 18th of May, 2024, 
12 new GMT plus one pain is not only a sprint, it is a compassionate marathon. For the Reposition Summit coming up on the 27th of May 2024, Secure the Future Initiative will be hosting 20 students across 50 schools in Benin. There is going to be quiz competition, debates, and so much more. You can partner with us to make a difference by giving to the account details displayed on the screen. You can give towards the transportation, feeding, and the awards that would be given to the students. Your position! Today is there! I'll be there! So I'm going to be there! Yeah. Hallelujah. Please let's rise and receive the message from our lead pastor. Can we just appreciate him this morning? Come on, let's put our hands together and give God praise this wonderful morning. Oh. Let's give God praise. Come on, you need to be excited. I don't know what you are going through, but it will not kill you. I assure you that. And what you are thinking that will happen, 85% of the time it will not happen. Let me increase in 90% of the time it will not happen. You will try on. I say you will try on. Come on, rise on your feet, meet about five persons, give them a hug, tell them welcome to the family gathering. If you can help me give the music team a hug, it will be good for me. And tell them what, what a wonderful time. Thank you for leading us into the presence of God. so much. I bring you greetings from my wonderful wife. She said I should greet everyone and she loves us. And um, just being, she's not around, but she'll be around next week or this week. Yes. Yes. Yesterday we had a wonderful time with the Engage Conference at Ikuba Hill. Please, if you are clapping, why don't you clap well? You know why you are not clapping? You didn't go. You didn't go. And they continued in the apostles' doctrine. Have you asked yourself why you are depressed? Why you are always worried? Why are you always worried about the future? Why are you always worried about things? You know, when we leave church now and we go home and somebody puts another sermon for you to be listening, you will say that you put it off. We are just coming from church.
but you don't put off series. Even if you have finished one episode. Somebody gave me a testimony. Is it a testimony? How somebody knew burnt millions of naira on data. Data. I'm not, I'm not joking. Millions on data. Why am I saying all this? Sometimes when I see sometimes something's plaguing you, I'm shocked. I can bring in a message that was taught to you one year ago. I was even shocked that we remember testimony. Maybe it's maybe maybe we should make people go through that so that their brain will be activated. Some of you will have to follow me to Ekobahi this afternoon, this morning, later today. Go after the teachings of the house. Don't think you know it. I have discovered that some people think they are looking at the phone or Bible in their phone. If I check your phones now, everything is there, but Bible is not there. Because Bible has no space. Some of you have uninstalled Bible and installed something else. I said, don't worry, I have the Bible in my hand. Maybe I should tell you now to change, exchange your phone and say, where's your Bible? And some of us will be shocked. Praise the Lord. You see, when I saw, this, I saw what is happening in this hall from last week till now, it reminds me of, oh, what for, oh, for the waters of Bethlehem. Oh, for the waters of Bethlehem. May the Lord satisfy and bless those people who are involved in this. Every seed has a voice. Every seed has a voice. You know, as we were praying today, I was just meditating on something. He said, some people will say, you, you don't force us to give. I don't force people on anything. Because God does not force. He doesn't force. Is it pastor for Tokan? Where are you going to Tokan? Somebody was sending me ta- um, first fruit. The first fruit was like 1K, 1, 2. Then all of a sudden, I saw one mighty amount. I said, No. <laughs> are you sure you are not making a mistake? Maybe. And the person gave a testimony. Just as I was, I, I, I was, um, I was online watching when was, um, our brother was, he was giving testimony about first fruit. Nobody wants to deceive you. Practice and see how it goes. Tomorrow evening at sundown, we start the Passover. If you are clapping, please clap. Some of you are wondering, what's Passover? All this one, they are doing this thing. They have come again. Are we Jews? Are we this thing? I don't like to say some type of things because you are not Jews, but you are reading the book they wrote. And nobody was born a Jew. It's somebody that crossed over the desert. Nobody was born a Jew. And that's why we're spiritual Jews. And in Leviticus 23, he said, these are my feasts. Not, your, not the feast of Israel. They are my own feast. So if you want to learn, you know, sometimes when, <coughs> when the virus came that time, they said, the world is coming to an end. I was looking at them. The world will end with one small virus. You know why you, did, you are afraid? You don't know the feast of the Lord. So when the Bible says the hour and the time, nobody knows. It's not one random day. When you say, it's like, it's like me telling you that I will meet you on Christmas Day. The hour and the time no man knows is in the feast of trumpets. 
They know the day. <laughs> so you must read it from the perspective. Passover is not what you did. It's what God did for you. He covered you. But you must go into, ask yourself within those days, what is in my life that even when God has helped me, I'm bringing darkness into my life. Thinking that I'm better than Pastor Anne Willie is bringing darkness into my life. You have to check your life in these days, the 30th. What am, am I bitter? Am I resentful? It's called the feast of unloving bread. You're going to be removing loving in your life. What is attracting darkness into my life? What is making not to work in increase? You'll be, what, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll be getting it. You'll be asking God, Lord, reveal it to me. Let every dark area in my life be exposed. Some of you are here yeah, now, you're already keeping malice with people. And meanwhile, as we say in our local palace, you people used to be very sweet. Get out of it. It's bringing death, darkness into you and decrease into your life. You need to ask God, what will increase life, light and increase in my life? And these are the things we need to operate in. And so, next thing I want to talk about is the Transform Conference. <clears throat> we are doing it differently this time because we are going to have it here. We are going to have morning session and evening session. The evening session will be the prophetic and healing time. Uh, most times, we like to give people information. More information does not bring transformation. You behold and become. Transformation is done by encounters. Nobody can tell Uyi now that God is good. And it may shock you that I started doing some things that he has not been doing before. And so, the Transform Conference is 9 o'clock. And when a speaker finishes speaking, hmm, we don't need to go anywhere. We will sit down again and use another 30 minutes to ask him questions. Because sometimes we'll be talking, ha, 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 ha. Some people don't know what you are saying. So don't plan that day. Plan that day. Don't, don't, they, they didn't, they didn't, you, you were not hurried to be giving birth to. Transformation to, to be con, to, not to be conformed to the patterns of this world is not is not microwave. Your conformation also is not microwave. It was little by little. Some of you spent two hours on social media. Four hours. As you just wake up, that's where you go to immediately. You are being conformed. Spend time to hear apostles' doctrines what God is saying now. There's nothing stopping you from keeping that side, that, keeping that there aside. Plan for it. It's costing us money. When I mean us, I didn't say, listen, all of us, all the money to do that thing is, comes from your pocket. And you know it's free. There's no conference I've gone to up in the US that I've done pay for. And they will still collect offering from my hand. So when you say what the church do for you, I'll be looking at you. The people come in, maybe some, maybe because you don't know, one of them is an advisor to the Kenyan government. One of them was asked, he was the top three software company in Lagos and God told him, close everything give it to your partner, don't be a partner anymore and come and follow me another one is a two star general
And many of you know Pastor Banky. Who is also a medical doctor in full-time practice. So don't tell me, eh? Sometimes when people say, but you know, I'm in marketplace. Say it again. So as you are in marketplace, you'll be a sinner. Or you should not be serious. Sorry, Bo. I welcome everybody that has joined us online. <laughs> You're part of the service. God bless you. This transform banner. How many of you have a house and shop? <laughs> Raise up your hand. House and shop. Do you, do you have it? I'll give you two. One for your house. Okay, how many of you don't have a uh, shop? You have house and office. Because I don't... <laughs> don't go and put it in the office that is not your own. No. <laughs> Please. <laughs> don't put it in the office that is not your own. I mean your office. The one you... You, you, <laughs> you are CEO. <laughs> Before we now pass through your office, you see different banners. <laughs> no, I don't want that. We want you to put this one there. And we're believing that some people will pay off it, will pay, pay it off. We want in the next 10 days or the next 8 days that everything, people will get to know about transform. And please invite your friends. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. So if you have office or shop, I'll be outside. Amen. We're still in the throne life. Um, I missed everybody. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I was listening to our was only last Sunday. And I was sitting yesterday in the, on Wednesday evening. I'm sure both of them activated me to do this message today. Uh, Pastor Derek was powerful on Wednesday during the master class. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 to 8, 6. And please, for the Passover, every 5.30, tomorrow 5.30, Tuesday 5.30, or Wednesday we'll be in church, so we'll not do 5.30 online prayers. Um, Thursday, Friday evening, Saturday evening, Sunday evening, up to the 30th, 5.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. Just for 30 minutes. And we'll be able to give you, when we'll be fasting, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Don't sleep. If you, feel, if you know you will sleep, it won't take one hour within that time to pray. Fast from 6 a.m. to 12. Or 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Some people can do 6 a.m., 6 p.m. to 12 noon. That's an 18-hour fast. You see, re-fast is not because you are not eating. Re-fast. The end result of refast is not eating. If you want to fast, look at the plight of people. Meditate on it. There's a book by, I've forgotten the name of the, the author now, but it's a book, Rich Christians in an Age of Hunger. Maybe you try and read that book. Ephesians 2, 1 to 6. The Bible says, the, the, the book of Ephesians, um, they believe is one of the lost book of Laodicea to the church in Laodicea, but it was really the book to believers. And you he made alive, who were dead in trespass and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this word, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now walks in the sons of disobedience. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we are by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we are dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Look at your brother. Say, I'm seated in the heavenly places. With Christ Jesus. 
that should be your position constantly. The fact that I'm seeing you here positionally or physically does not mean that you have vacated that poor spot. When Jesus ascended, also know that we also ascended. When he was crucified, when he was buried, when he rose and he ascended, we also participated in it. So you are living the ascended life. You are living the true life. And that's why sometimes when you are worried about something, you are not aware of an inferior kingdom. And what is making you to be aware of an inferior kingdom? It's your beliefs. That you are seated in the heavenly places. You can hear it and not believe it. You can echo it. You can even, as I'm reading the scripture, you were even chanting it with me. Doesn't mean that it's here. It might be on your lips, it might be on your head, but not in your heart. And it's out of the heart that all issues of life flows. And that's why you should, the Bible says we should meditate on scriptures. We should meditate. Meditation is the one that makes you to break down bad beliefs. That makes you to see from heaven's perspective. And so today I want to talk about beliefs that empowers the throne life. Beliefs that empowers the throne life. There are beliefs that we are supposed to follow. Beliefs. You know, hard work is good. But I, know, I hope you know that Jesus exalted generosity more than hard work. It does not negate hard work. But he puts generosity on top of hard work. Working is good, but hustling is bad. Yesterday I was in Ibubahi. I said, go to your AI or chat DP or any of the things and, and, and say, what is the meaning of hustle? Please do it now. Hustle. Meaning of hustle. Because some of you have like two, hus two side hustles. Can you give me the answer? It's when my own has come now, you do it. The answer is not coming fast. <laughs> it says not be bringing phone to church. <laughs> that, that's when they are now saying it. <laughs> What's also? Hostel. H U S T L E. Push. Huh? Huh? Walk. Walk rapidly. As a machine. Uh -huh. Striving hard to push something. Uh -huh. Push roughly. Okay. To swindle. A state of busy activity. Scammer. How many of you have side also? <laughs> you have side also. <laughs> you see, it's not every word they say outside that should be your vocabulary. <laughs> it's not, you, you see, that somebody was telling me something one time and he was saying, why is it like this? I said, you have been confirmed. You have been confirmed. And we say it with, with all finesse. And you don't know that what comes out of your mouth actually regulates your life. Let this book of the law not depart from your mouth. Anything you speak into your, you speak out is constantly opening you, opening your gates and you are receiving it. That's why I tell sometimes when some people are asking, ah, why do you do this? Why are there some things uh, you are thinking about sexual thoughts and everything? And I say, what type of jokes do you listen to? What do you expose your mind to in terms of what you watch? 
because the joke might be so so little, so subtle, so minute. But over time, it has built a stronghold in your mind that you don't have a defense system for it again. And the enemy is smarter. He's smart. He knows. And so, we are seated with Christ Jesus in the heavenly realms. You must understand that. That's your position constantly. So, if somebody, that's why I say witches say they are sleeping and they are flying. You now, you are like that. You are seated here, I can see you, but you are in the heavenly places. That means that you have two perspectives every time. You see what is happening in your environment. You see what is happening in Nigeria. But if you want to have a higher perspective, you must go to the penthouse where you naturally look from. That means that you don't look from your earthly place. You look from your heavenly realm. Somebody can be outside now. We may not see, but somebody out on that in this story building can see there's somebody here. Why? It has a higher perspective. And that's what we have to do constantly. What beliefs will make me have a higher perspective concerning any situation? What beliefs do I have to do? Your child, I've never seen a child sitting down. Two of them. Sorry, I'm only your son, so I should give you change. Why did I say so? The boy went to buy biscuit. He was coming to give the mother the chain. <laughs> it doesn't bother whether you don't have money. When uh, men of honor, and I said, um, I was telling the men, I said, write your offering down. We're going to give an offering of worry. What's worrying your mind? You write it down. You say, cast your care upon me and uh, for he cares for you. So, DJ uh, was with his son. He was writing. <laughs> and he was looking at his son. The boy is not writing. <laughs> I said, you're not right. I said, I don't have any worry. <laughs> I don't have worry now. <laughs> There's no worry in my life. <laughs> But the father is writing. <laughs> worried about him, worried about tomorrow, worried about this thing, worried about everything. And the boy is just sitting down like, he gave me 200, give my mother, and gone. He put water at his, at, at his, uh, under his hand. <laughs> he heard the biscuits, they tell him, if my brother is coming. So, <laughs> you don't see children sitting down and say, oh, wow. <laughs> Even our brother Debra is laughing because he just had a four child. So even the three are not sitting down <laughs> saying, oh, wow. are you sure we'll go to school today? <laughs> even this new term that is coming. Why? They have a belief that their father is responsible. They have a belief. And now they are in holiday. They eat anyhow. They are not even bothered that dollars has increased. They don't think. It's later we'll now call them and say, now the reason. <laughs> you better sit down and think about your life. They'll be wondering. <laughs> what, what, I don't know. What, what did you do to mommy today? What did you do? Is, he, is, he, is she angry? Because they see abundance in you, but you don't see it. What are these beliefs that empowers it? He said we are seated in Christ Jesus, with Christ Jesus in the heavenly places. The first belief is that you must understand, you must believe that you are a spirit. You are a spirit. You are more spirit than flesh. Do you believe that? It's the spirit that sustains the body. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28, it said, God said, let us make money in our image, in our likeness. This is the basis for honor to any person. 
This is the basis we use for honor. Everybody was created in the image of God. Whether you have the same belief system with me or not. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over, the air, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, feed the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Without that breath, you are not living. Ecclesiastes 12, 7. The last chapter of Ecclesiastes said, Then the dust will return to the earth as it was. The spirit will return to God who gave it. The spirit will return to God who gave it. Have you ever seen a spirit worried? On video. The one that you watched. <laughs> <laughs> when Jesus appeared after he resurrected he was walking through walls but they could also touch him that's the type of life you should be living those days they called them the people and most of them were blacks the desert fathers when they tell you they will meet you by this thing they don't do transportation they will appear But as I'm telling you, and I say, ah, ah, that's the shower. <laughs> Some of you don't even try it. So we appear now. No, no, you see. <laughs> Listen, what we see in the Bible should be our beliefs. It should be our belief. If with five loaves of, and two fishes of a small boy's lunch, 5,000 men beside women and children were, were, were fed, why are you insulting your husband that gave you what he had has to go to the market? He said, it's 12 cups of rice. What will happen? You have not even started cooking it. You don't even know. You know, sometimes they say that is Jesus. That's Jesus. Jesus is all too high. That's Jesus. And that's how we, we, we reduce the, our expectation. And the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut off. Does it not shock you sometimes? You, some of you have experienced it. You are doing a party. And you thought that the visitors were too much. Yeah. Only after they have gone and eaten very well, they are still food. Yeah. Or oh, you thought there was no multiplication. Yeah. <laughs> no, you see, listen, first of all, I must wake up with reality and my spirit. Yeah. And I have spiritual solution all the time. And I have not only emotional uh, or, uh, or IQ, I have spiritual IQ or spiritual intelligence or spiritual quotient you must understand that so it doesn't matter what comes your way there must be a, a solution there must be a solution there must be a solution and the solution comes by what how did God solve problem in the beginning he spoke the spirit hovered and he spoke but let me tell you you are always speaking no? The only thing is that you are not speaking the right thing. I, I don't finish. <laughs> you are speaking. And you don't understand that you are a speaking spirit. And the world was framed by words. Spirit speak. Speak only what God is telling you. Not what your situation is telling you. Not what media is telling you. But what God is telling you. That's why I always ask, did God tell you? You are a spirit. You are a spirit. 
our brother Uyi began to speak. Nothing missing, nothing broken. It may look like, oh, say, now that's what in your talk. What will you say again? What will you say again? The same thing when you go and meet Baba Lawo, they will tell you, take this powder, wake up by 1 a.m. Incantation. They will give you incantation. What is your incantation speaking in tongues? La kabaroshkara. Ibara kabaroshkara kariye. Bereke bosu. Listen. That's your language of, to your husband. Every wife and husband have their codes. There's a way you, you look at your wife she will understand. <coughs> you are a spirit. And God will not give you physical solution. He will give you spiritual solution because he's a spirit. <coughs> Must finish this message. You are a spirit. Write it down. I am a spirit. <laughs> I am a spirit. I'm a spirit. Rain has fall now, fallen now so that the weather is cool today. Yeah. You guys at home because rain fell. It did not start falling when they were service has started before it's, you are late <coughs> and it has stopped don't think it will go for two second service I'm a spirit I'm a spirit and that's why you should be able to be patient with your wife patient with your children because they are spirits too they were created before the foundation of the world you can't understand them in two years even in 20 years So the Bible says, then you will turn to the Lord, the veil is taken away. You must constantly know that there's something that is hidden for you, not from you. For it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but to set it out is the glory of kings. God will not hide. You know, you cannot be doing hide and seek with a child. They will not open boot and then go and enter. This, this, the... The phone will not be it will not be sweet. It's, it's in the finding of it yeah. that if you if you go and hide too much, the child will start crying. <laughs> when you are playing hide and seek with children, they are very funny. Where are you? It's supposed to keep quiet. I'm here. <laughs> That's the dance that God has with you. 2020, the dollar has risen. Everything's in it. There's a secret he has hidden for you. Turn to him. Because you are a spirit, he will open it to you. And you know the funniest thing? The way he speaks to me will be different from the way he speaks to Pastor Derek. Concerning some things. Why? It's creative. Number two, you must believe in your spiritual, your supernatural identity. You are not only a spirit, you have a supernatural identity. In Revelation, he says he will give you a new name. It's an identity. If I don't have that, I would think that I'm visiting his presence constantly. <laughs> Come, let's lead us into his presence. There's a reality to that, but I, I can tell you something. We came with his presence. We carry him. We carry him. I have a supernatural identity. I was created in the likeness of God. I was created to function like God on earth. In John chapter 1 verse 12 to 13. He said, but as many as received him, him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of, God, of man, but of God. Second Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, it's a new creation. 
old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. In other words, it's saying you are new humanity. That's what the first century believers called themselves. They are new humanity. A humanity that has never existed before. Higher than that, the first Adam. Ephesians 2, 6, as we said. And he has raised us up together. And made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 to 17. For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption to, for, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Understand it, you are the child of God. And if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Not co heads joint heads. So my identity is that I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. So, if I'm a child of God, like I was talking about a brother and his, and, uh, and his son, he is not worried, the father is worried. I should be relaxing while my daddy should be hustling. He say, why are you not telling, are you not teaching them laziness? Laziness is another ball game. Before Adam sinned, he had work. The question you should be asking, how much were they paying him? It's only a human being that is paid for work. How many, what, where do birds go in, at the end of the month to receive salary for singing? Am I saying you should not receive salary? That's not what I'm saying. Because if you don't understand that, when you don't have a paid job, you won't work. Because if I'm a child of God, this is what happens. My father will take care of me. If I'm a child of God, I will be in the father's house. I will have the consciousness that is for with me all the time. The highest blessing God can give to you is a name change. I won't let you go until you bless me. I said, what's your name? I say your name shall no longer be called Jacob. You are not a supplanter. You are not a deceiver. Your name shall be called Israel. That is the highest blessing. Your identity. Write it down. I'm a child of God. Write it. Let it be your daily confession. I'm a child. No wonder Jonathan Hesler got that song. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm a child. Let them do anything. I'm a child of God. And that's why you should always wake up with this thing. I carry the favor of God. Anywhere I go, people like me. There are many of you that just, you have this belief that you know, anywhere you go to, after three months, they must hate you. Then really, after three months, this is talking about every game. Because you have not changed your confession. Just imagine anything you say, if it happens, how will you be talking? I must have the belief. If I know I'm a child of God, that means that he has not booted me out of the house. I'm in, I'm in the throne room with him. And that's how many of us don't know how to pray. Sometimes he say prayer is battle. It's battle. It's battle. It's battle. Listen, no two nations go to war without going to court. The Bible says in Revelation, he judges and makes war. He judges and makes war. When you are in the throne room, you don't do battle prayer. You do throne room prayers. 
And throne room prayers are judicial prayers. According to Luke chapter 18. We must come into that reality where we know that I'm a child. I love children. When I look at them, they, they, as you just pass any place, they are saying, so I, say, I want to take ice cream. <laughs> and it, it, it's make matters worse in this day. Now, those days, we don't tell our parents anything. No. They will first of all ask us, do you want? <laughs> These days they don't even <laughs> I like them because they don't want to go and be asking anybody. Because those days we, we want to and we use backyard. So that's why they will first of all want you when we go to that place. Remember those days they will bring food for us. In the house when our parents are not around. From neighbor. We will be looking at the food. Though. <laughs> no matter how you sense in our nose. Close the cooler. <laughs> Some parents that did it that year. <laughs> well, you see, a child is a child. If a child that is breastfeeding needs milk now, everybody's. <laughs> everybody. They have no, they don't think, they don't worry. Where they think, they don't worry. Say, want to buy ice cream? Okay, we are thinking, we'll buy mommy. That's the only thought. It's not that, ah, we're going to meet mommy now. We're going to meet daddy. Don't you think that salary time has not come? <laughs> because I heard the other day, daddy was complaining. Please, let's swallow speed. <laughs> and take the ice cream. <laughs> oh, let's go and put water in the, where shall light is? There's no light for it to be blocked. So, <laughs> <laughs> are you listening and they just they just they just write it down again I'm a child of God I'm a child of God that means that he's no longer he's not booting you out your father can tell you those days get out of my sight I don't want to see you that's not God I've seen people, people tell me they, they want to get they want to make their life right before they come to church it's like a baby with a dirty nappy, na, um, diaper. Say, mommy, don't carry me. Let me go and clean myself first. Wow. It doesn't matter whether she's smelling poo, poo or the baby is smelling poo. When mommy come with me. <laughs> it's only adult. Shame. And also round up today. You must have the belief that your spirit can train your brain again. Your spirit can train your brain. In Romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 2 say, I beseech you therefore brethren by the message of God that you present your body as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable of God which is a, your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this word and be transformed. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Apostle Paul was writing the book in, of, of, uh, of Philippians in the jail cell. And in verse 8 of Philippians chapter 4, he said, Finally, brethren, whatever things that are true, whatever things that are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things that are pure, whatever things that are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Psalm 119 verse 11, Your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. You know my problem is that we think on the wrong things. We are wired for negativity. 
That's a fallen man. Sometimes you look at your money that you receive now and say, now this one wants a build house. Now this one wants a bike car. You know what you are doing? You are freezing your present problem into the future. Meanwhile, life is not linear. It's cyclical. There are seasons and times. There are seasons and times. There are seasons and times. It's not linear. And because when we freeze our problem, you know what we do? We take a decision based on that frozen problem. And we take a long-term decision on that frozen problem. Not understanding, he said, whatsoever things that are true. Whatsoever things. It can even happen. Some people don't even think well about their wife or think well about their husband. Or think well about their children. He said, whatever things that are true. They are pure. They are lovely. When you see an average Nigerian, how do they think about Nigeria? When you see an average Christian, how do they think about their church? I've seen some people say, what did you do for me? I talk to you every day. I teach you. Let me try to blow some of my trumpet. <laughs> I went to school. I was a lecturer. I'm a John Maxwell certified coach. I paid dollars upon dollars of money to get that. I'm not talking of the trainings I've gone to. And you hear me every Sunday for free. Then we now do conferences that you don't pay money at all. Then we bring people who when they want to speak <laughs> yesterday I was in Bobahi I look at the keyboard I said do you have a keyboard <laughs> he said no but you can play some of you cannot even dress before you see when you came here Should I start to say calling your name now? <laughs> you know why? When people say they don't help, you know what you are saying. They didn't give you money. Yeah, I remember those, people, those days that some people used to sing here. <laughs> we endured the pain. <laughs> ah, we endured it too. Thank God for your life now. You see, I'm not looking at them, I'm looking at you. <laughs> I've never seen a drummer with a drum set in their house. Very few. My friend was going to buy one instrument that they used to do to do music in the U. I said, which kind of instrument? They know they wouldn't play for that job. <laughs> you go hungry if you get this. <laughs> Or nobody will listen to you. Six hundred dollars. And the other day I saw it in the house. Not using it again. A man said, I sat down, I saw the altar, I went to do it in my business. I was listening to a man recently, he said, if I use the the template of evangelism on my church for my business, my business just turns around. Some of you cannot take picture before. (laughs) 
You see, I'm looking at you. Let's not go too much. Repent. 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 We are not talking about the prayer they prayed for you. <laughs> not to talk about one person look at you and say, ah, bless this guy, she's not good. Yeah. Where did you know the person before? Yeah. Don't be bitter. Use this Passover season to remove bitterness from your life. One thing I must know is that it's time for you to start retraining your brain with your spirit man. When you give your life to Christ, your spirit is regenerated. Why do you believe that you don't have it? Why are you living life carnally? You have to be living inside out. Just imagine, sometimes when I'm, looking, when I'm believing God for money, I will hear his voice. So, 100 million is bigger than God. I'll just ask my name. Just imagine God in heaven. <laughs> in terms of saying, oh, wow. The father telling the son, saying, oh, wow, we are finished. One billion. <laughs> Say this one big, very huge. <laughs> you see why you are laughing now? But I can tell you, yeah, you can go on, you become sad. Listen, that's why you worship, because worship introduces you to your spirit. You worship. Instead of worrying, start worshiping. And begin to tell God, Lord, you know, when you listen to a message and it, it challenges you, listen to it again. Not only listen to it, allow it to reframe, to, to, to condition your mind. Change your thinking. Stop fighting. Uh, why, is Papa, why is Reverend Ben talking like that? I've seen people say that many times. It says not on the street. God forbid, I'm not a street child. We are taking care of street children. I want to be to the street. God forbid. I'm a child of God. The word of God works anywhere. It works anywhere. How can somebody pick up road? I believe that guy was already dead. It was his speaking that brought him to life. Because you can't survive that thing. His, bro his bones were not broken. He's not the one encouraging the ogre. No. That's why I was... I, 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 when, when believers... You know why? Let, let me say this way because we don't train ourselves. We believe so much in hard work than God. I'm not saying you should not work hard. This is what happened. In the wilderness, in, the, in, the, in, in, in Egypt... They used to work every day for them to eat. And they walk, they eat, eh? standing. But when they're going to have the Passover meal, they tell them to sit down. But they should eat in a hurry. Or they should sit down. In the wilderness, God was providing for them food every day. It was a miracle of provision. They didn't do anything because they were nomads. <laughs> Is it when you stay in the place for one month? You want to plant. He was teaching them that he can provide for them. As they entered the promised land, he said the man has ceased. Why? He wanted to teach them another miracle. It's called the miracle of productivity. Without them forgetting the miracle of provision. Hear me. Why did he cease? He said now on the seventh year, don't plant anything. So that you will not think it's your might and your power that brought you this word. He said, because on the sixth year, because I must teach you how to rest in me and take the necessary instruction for the next time. He said, on the sixth year, I will give you a harvest that will take you to the ninth year. That even anything grows on the tree, don't even eat it. Because I will so give you abundance in the sixth year. Don't ever negate these two things. Miracle of provision, a miracle of abundance, of productivity. I believe this year God wanted to show us the miracle of his provision. So, 
I must train my mind that. I know I may have lost my job or I've lost this business opportunity. And it seems that money, money is not coming. Maybe I expected money to complete my house, so it's not coming. I will walk around my house and say, It's completed. It's completed. It's completed. Why? I won't steal to destroy his name. I like the prayer of Agor. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Give me just the right thing. I don't want to be so poor and steal. I don't want to be so rich and forget about your name. Give me the one that makes me to remember who you are. Amen. Start training your brain again with your spirit. Meditate on the word of God. Know that you are in the throne life. And believe that whatsoever he tells me, I will do it. And whatsoever I say concerning my life, it must come to me. So when Apostle, uh, uh, Pastor Willie was talking about being prophetic and talking about people giving prophetic words, it's what we must live by. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Early hours of this morning, I brought a prophetic word that was given to me again. And I was just playing it, trying to get the meat out of it. To feed me. To train my mind. To retrain everything I have taken in. Every day you see things that want to condition you. Everything. Somebody will come and tell you, ah, food won't increase. You, you carry the money you don't have, you go and buy for and keep. Only for you to know that it has reduced a little bit. <laughs> you don't want to change the dollar. You don't want to change dollar. So people bought dollar as 1,500. Can and they are not living in the U.S. That dollars is still the same. They are still keeping it. Don't worry, it will go. Why do you speculate bad bad things? You say you have to take advantage. Did God tell you? Did God tell you? Or speculators told you? It's because you had money. That's why you went to buy. The one that did not have. That doesn't even know place to aboki or anywhere. <laughs> it's enjoying like believing Lord. I don't know what they are saying. But you are my God. And I trust you and I believe you. And I know you take care of me. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. Let's pray. Listen. I don't know about you. I constantly ask myself sometimes. Lord help me. Help me. Help me. I can be a bad father, a bad mother. Sorry, not a bad mother. I can't be father and mother at the same time. Even a bad pastor. Help me. You see, sometimes the news is so strong that the word of God is not strong again. You're going to pray, Lord. Help me to remember what your word says. In any difficult situation, I find myself. Come on, lift up your voice. Help me to remember what your word is saying. In every situation, I find myself, whether good, bad, or ugly. Can you lift up your voice and pray? Can you lift up your voice and pray? Let your word be activated as it was activated in my brother's heart. He had a testimony for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That testimony began to prophesy to him and he began to speak. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Lord, in every situation I find myself, may your word come alive in my heart. May your word come alive in my heart. The word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Every word I read, come and lift up your voice and pray. Ela baraka barosh karaka dia barosh karaka dia Ela baraka barosh karaka dia barosh karaka dia baraka barosh kara Lift up your voice pray
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want you to lay your hands on your chest. You know, we don't understand who we are. Your supernatural identity is you are a child. Some of you will go different lengths. I know parents here that will go different lengths. That's so that their children will eat, their children will go to school. Different lengths. A man, his son was about to be kicked out in the university in the U.S. In a week, he went everywhere. Went to a supplier and said, yeah, he, people, he said, don't worry, give me the money, I will supply you. He went everywhere. When he paid the school fees, as he sat down, God looked at him and said, that's how I hustle for you. That's how I do to you. I do everything for you. Lay your hands and say, Lord, may I remember constantly I'm your child. Come on, pray. Pray, pray that prayer. May I remember. Help my memory that every time I'm in a situation, I should never forget that I'm your child. Whether you are working or you are not or you don't have a paid job but you are productive. Lord, help me to know that I'm your child. No matter the circumstance that come my way. Come on, lift up your voice and pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want you to leave your seat and go to meet about 5% and prophesy you are a child of God. Come on, say it loud and clear. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. Never you forget that. You are a child of God. Don't ever forget that. If you want to shake the person's hand so hard, shake it hard. You are a child of God. Don't forget that. He will take care of you. 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 People left you before. Look at how God has taken care of you. They abandoned you before, but look at how God has taken care of you. He will take care of you. He will take care of you. that he will take care of you. He will take care of you. You won't die. I just, let, let me speak to somebody right now. They, they have abandoned you, but you will not die. The, the negative prophecy will not come to pass in your life. You will not beg. They left you alone so that you can encounter him. And you encounter God's presence. You encounter his provision. You encounter his protection. You encounter his love like never before. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you for our giving. We thank you for our offerings. Lord, even as we give today, we ask for, we ask that you open our eyes to see your hand in our lives. To see your constant provision. In Jesus' mighty name. Declare with me, say I'm a prosperous soul. And I'm prospering right now. And the nations will rejoice. Shout a good amen. Lord, if you have your tithes, you can bring them forward. Thank you so much, Reverend Ben, for that message. Thank you for awakening in us something again. Praise the Lord. Let's not forget that the Passover begins sundown tomorrow. Join us online 5.30 p.m. Please be reminded. Uh, tomorrow, next tomorrow, Wednesday, we meet here. Thursday, Friday, uh, GSW is um, 12 mid uh, 11.45, it begins, praise the Lord. Alright, please do not forget also your live groups. If you are not in a live group, please find out from the host or the pastors, the live group close to you so that you can attend. For those of you who are in live groups but have stopped attending, Take this week again to repent so that you go back to your life groups. Praise the Lord. 
All right, please can we rise to our feet so that we can go home. If you are coming here from, let's rise on our feet, please. If you are coming here for the first time, you are one of the reasons that we are here and we appreciate you. We love you very much. Please, can you just wave your hands? You are doing well. I know why you are coming for the first time. Don't worry, we'll talk about that later. If you are coming for the first time, please let me just see your hands. Hallelujah. Please, as we go, can you just take your bag? If you are coming for the first time, those two beautiful ladies are here and they will give you a beautiful gift from our lead pastors. If you want us to pray for you, you need prayers or you want counseling, the prayer ministers will be out here immediately the service ends. If you also want us to talk to you, uh, every Thursday, um, the doors are open. There's room for counseling, inner healing. We just want you to book at the front desk so that you can have an opportunity to speak to the pastor. God bless you. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word we've heard today. Thank you because your word heals, your word delivers, your word transforms, your word brings about answers. And we pray that as we go out that door, we will go with these things in the name of Jesus. Thank you because this week we will have a beautiful fellowship with you. We will, our walk with you will be deeper in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord bless and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up his countenance and give us peace in Jesus Christ's name. Shalom family. Shalom Nigeria. If you're coming for the first time, please would like to greet you and welcome you warmly. If you'd like us to pray for you, prayer ministers, please can you come out? <laughs>